Hi, I'm NJ Lindquist and I'm going to be talking about organizing to write your space. Over the years, I can't begin to estimate how much time I've wasted looking for things I've misplaced. Slips of paper with ideas on them, contracts, books, emails, you name it, I've misplaced it. And too often, after I spent hours and hours and hours searching for something, it turns up right after I stopped looking for it. Can you relate? I won't try to fool you into thinking I've solved this issue, but I will mention a few things I've learned. If I put things down once, I can usually find them again. But if I move them to a better, safer place, I can guarantee you I won't remember where I put them. The old adage, a place for everything, and everything in its place really works. The trick is to have a place ready for whatever you're going to have coming in. It's much easier to find things if you have a place for them. A slip of paper with an idea on it should go either into a file folder for ideas or the file folder for the project the idea concerns. A new book on writing should go on the shelf for that kind of book. A contract should either be put into a folder for contracts or the folder for that particular project, be it on your computer or in your filing drawer. Even an email you don't want to lose should be put into the file folder for that topic in your email program. By having places for everything, you won't do what I've frequently done, stand in the middle of my office surrounded by piles of clutter feeling overwhelmed because I don't know where to put any of it. Or worse, wanting to write but not being able to because I don't know where relevant information is hiding and berating myself that before I can write I have to first get my space in order. And that feels like such a huge task I just want to walk away and forget about writing altogether. What you need to be a writer. Number one, a place to keep your ideas. Number two, a place to keep your pens, papers, books, all the accoutrements of writing. A place to write. Whether it's a desk in the basement, one end of the kitchen table, a chair in your bedroom, something that says to you, I write here. And of course, something to write on. For most of us, that's a computer of some sort, or it might be a person to type up what you write. The absolutely most important item for any writer to have organized is his or her ideas. Everything else can get messy or be allowed to sink into oblivion if necessary, but ideas are the straw writers must have in order to spin their gold. So how do you keep those ideas safe? You need idea catchers. First, I never go anywhere without a small notebook. After years of trying out various styles, my preference is a small spiral bound notebook that has plain unlined paper. It's actually a sketch pad it's about four by six inches at the most and will fit into my purse quite easily. A man might even want a smaller notebook and a thin one that will fit easily into a pocket. I prefer the ones with the coils down the side because then you can slip a pen inside them and always have the pen and notebook together. I've had some with coils on the top including a black one with green pages that had a cutout of a light bulb on the front cover. Perfect concept. I do use the longer lined reporter's notepads as well, but only when I'm doing interviews or otherwise taking notes. I like having unlined pages because I don't want to have to worry about writing in lines. I might just scribble a word right across the page, or I might actually draw a picture of some sort or create a small chart instead. And in a pinch, I can always use my iPhone to get that idea that I need to not forget. True confessions, yes, I have occasionally tried to write down ideas while engaged in another activity. Okay, if you must know, I was driving on the 401 freeway in Toronto, think a lot of traffic, when Bob McCown, primetime talk show host for the Fan 590, gave me the idea for what became the plot of Glitter of Diamonds. I still remember scrambling with one hand to open my purse, pull my notebook out, and scribble the sentence that Bob had just said onto a page so that I got his words down accurately. 
Usually it's a little easier to pull out the notebook and jot down a few things. You might hear some words in a checkout line. You might be in a situation where you're observing a person in a restaurant or shopping mall. There might be a sentence that stands out in a sermon or a conversation or something on the TV. A thought that seems to come out of nowhere and deserves to be remembered. Sometimes I write a few words out of anger at an unjust situation I've observed. Sometimes I see a story in the newspaper or on the internet that catches my attention. Now, when I'm home, I don't normally reach for my notebook. Instead, I have stacks of note paper or post-it notes scattered in various rooms. The trick is to capture the idea on a single piece of paper. Never let a good idea or even the vague beginning of an idea escape. Write it down on something, but don't confuse the issue by writing a bunch of ideas on one page. Instead, one page per idea. Now, some of you might want to carry a digital recorder with you. For starters, it makes driving safer if that's when you get a lot of ideas. I also have a friend who gets her best ideas in the shower, and she prefers to have a digital recorder outside of the shower that she can shout at. But you still want to get them down on paper or on your computer at some point. The key construction block for writers is the file folder. I probably have close to a thousand file folders, all colors, in various places, some of which I will show you. And even though we're storing more and more of our things on computers, most of us still need a physical footprint or we want a place to put some of the things we've had published and so forth. Whether you're just going to do a little writing, maybe three or four stories a year or one book, or a lot of writing, 30 or 40 articles a month, or maybe three books a year, a little organization will help you get there. For the past six years, this has been my office. Yes, I have an entire bedroom on our second floor, all from mine. The L-shaped computer desk was bought at a garage sale. The shelf and the counter were made by my husband to my specifications from material picked up at garage sales or at a hardware store. The bulletin boards are sheets of corkboard. This is the view from my chair to the left, and that's the custom cabinet counter that my husband made with lots of things on it in that one. And uh, this is the view from my chair toward the, the door of the room where I have my TV over there. And yes, uh, there's another bulletin board on this wall as well. I bought these amazing carts a few years ago at Grandin Toy. I'm the type of person where out of sight is out of mind, so these are perfect for me. They hold the files for books and other items I'm currently working on. As you'll see below, I keep them right next to me. They're off to the right side there under the shelf, which my husband put there so that I don't set my cup of coffee or whatever I'm uh, eating or drinking at the time on top of the folders. Now you can't see it because the chair is in the way, but right behind it there is a section of the desk that has two drawers, a, a top drawer that holds pens and such things, and a filing drawer underneath it. And these are the files I keep there. These are business files, things I'm working on right now, and they're also one file per book for some of the ideas that I have that I'm not currently working on but don't want to forget. I also have this little wire folder rack which I bought some years ago. It came with I think it was like six folders in it of different colors and if you don't have any file folders or any place to put them a rack like this would be a good beginning spot. This is an Omnicart and we bought Omnicarts I think they came with two compartments. We bought them for each of our sons about, I don't know, 15 years ago, I think. And uh, they can store anything, but they actually happen to be perfect for storing files. And I have a stack of two in my office, and that's where I keep all my how to write files and templates and things like that. Now if we move upstairs to our loft, I have a small filing cabinet which we've had for a lot of years and my personal files are there. And then I have my big filing cabinet and um, it was used I think at an office store 
and it has pullout drawers. This is one drawer and it has all my business files from past publishers, agents, um, all those things that I, I want to know where to find it if I ever have a question. And then I have another drawer which has all my workshops in it. So basically at least one copy of each workshop that I've done, my notes for it, any uh, materials, my handouts, and anything else I want to remember. The black ones are all writing workshops and the green ones are anything else, leadership, creativity, and various things. And I have another drawer which has um, basically a whole bunch of articles and columns that I've had published in the past. So there will be my draft and then there will be a print copy of uh, whatever came out. And if it was done on the internet, I will print it off and put it in there. And that way I can always find everything. But I have more than file folders. I have something else. Um, my favorite book for helping me get organized is this one. Get Organized, Get Published, 50 Ways to Make Time for Success. And it's written by Don Aslett, D-O-N-A-S-L-E-T-T, -T, and Carol Cartano, C-A-R-T-A-I-N-O. Don Aslett uh, wrote a bunch of books about cleaning your house and offices and things like that, but this one is specifically for writers. I've read it several times. When it first came out, it basically let me know I wasn't crazy to want to write five or six or 20 books at the same time. Later reads taught me other things about how best to organize so that I could work on all those books at one time. I reread it again last fall and it eased the panic I was feeling that I'd never be able to fulfill all my writing goals. One step at a time, one file at a time, one bin at a time. Yeah, these are plastic bins. The thing is, when your file folder starts getting full or you start putting things like books and um, CDs and pictures and whatnot into your file, what you do is basically transfer that file to a plastic bin and start loading the bin up. And I have, as you can see, a, a bunch of bins in my office. And um, these are all books that I'm actually hoping, I, I'm either working on or hoping to write very soon. I have a bunch more bins upstairs in a cabinet that we got at Canadian Tire when it was on sale. And these ones contain drafts of books, the CDs holding the final books, a copy of the final book, anything around books that have been published. And there's also some of my materials for my uh, workshops. The other thing that I have is binders. These are for some of my workshops and for some of my books. When I'm working on a book, I will print out the draft of the book, I will put it into a binder, put its name on the side, and it becomes more real to me. I'm a visual person and I'm a hands-on person. So having these binders really helps me to vision, the, yeah, this is gonna be a real book, or it is a real um, workshop. Now, how do you create files? Basically, what I do, the moment I have an idea written down on a piece of paper or torn out of a newspaper or whatever, I create a file folder and I put the name of either the project I'm going to work on or if I don't have anything in mind for it yet I will put it into a file folder that is say for poetry or for nonfiction or I might just have an idea file folder for things I don't know what to do with yet. If you start with five or six file folders like the ones in that metal rack that I showed you you might start by making the blue folder nonfiction ideas, the red one fiction, purple one drama, the yellow one poetry, pink one resources, the gray one business. Um, I'll actually give you a handout, which you can download and print off, that will have a bunch of ideas for the kind of files that you might need. Um, if you know that, for example, you only want to write nonfiction, and you don't need the fiction or the poetry or the drama, so you might want to have something that says book ideas or 
any kind of um, labels as, as to whatever works for your mind. And basically you keep adding things to it. When you get a new idea, you pop it in. Um, when I was raising my kids and I was really, really busy, what I did was I put labels of topics that I was interested in. Um, so I might have one on education, I might have one on parenting, um, I had one on story ideas, I had one on police because I was interested in writing mysteries, I had one on teenagers. So whatever, whatever makes sense to your mind and you know, you know what kind of ideas you're getting, create folders so that you have places to put those ideas. So we talked about creating files, but you have to have a space. You have to have a place to keep those files. You have to have a place to do your writing. My header here says work with what you have and I'm showing you a picture. That is actually a picture of my space where I did a lot of my writing when I was much, much younger, like 10 or or 12. In fact, I started writing my first book in that chair. I never had a desk when I was growing up. I either sat on a chair in the living room or I sat on my bed or I sat on the floor and that's where I did my homework. That's where I did any writing that I did. So that was my space. I had a small bookshelf. I didn't have very many books. Um, I had dolls, as you can see. And, and that was what I did, so that was my space. Later on, after my husband and I got married, we inherited this desk, which you can see. Um, my husband's aunt had bought it for him. It had been, um, I think it was damaged in transport, and uh, so it couldn't be sold as new, and she was able to get it at a, at a good price, and it had um, lots of nice drawers in it, that uh, had file drawers and so forth. And we had that in our first apartment and then in a house we rented and then um, we had it here. This was a, a century old house in Regina, three stories, and this was up on the third floor. I had two rooms and this became our library slash office. The red chair was actually from my great aunt. My parents had inherited it from her and we got it from them and it had originally been green but it ended up being red and it was my favorite chair for reading and writing in. Um, everything else in the room, the um, shelves are just the cheapest kind we could get. We had boxes to store my um, teaching supplies from having taught high school and our things from university. So this was our little room and um, any writing that I did theoretically was done here, although the reality is a lot of it was done in our living room as well. New house in the basement, same red chair, same desk. Uh, we've added a somewhat more ergonomic chair and we've added a typewriter. This was um, I had actually written my first book and a good part of three other books all by hand. I did not know how to type. This was my little space. It was part of our basement. As you can see, I shared it with the sewing machine, um, this green desk, which I'll show it to you. It's actually huge. We picked that up for hardly any money from a hotel that had gone out of business. Um, some of my books are stored, as you can see, um, on those shelves and uh, the rest of our books, I believe, were up in our bedroom. So this was my little corner. This is a better picture of that great big green desk, which had really um, top-notch filing drawers on each side, so there were four all together. It was the heaviest thing ever. It was made of solid wood under some kind of laminate. and uh, it moved from house to house with us and the movers got to carry it. When we moved from Regina to Mississauga, we had um, 
let me think, a four-year-old, a two-year-old, and a six-week-old. So you can tell where my priorities were, and you can see that my desk is actually in our bedroom, but um, as you can see, there were other priorities at that time. We had a new computer, our first computer, which was down in our family room, and again, as you can see, other people were um, just as interested in that as I was. And it was on a new desk. It was actually called a library table. It was a really old table that we'd found at a garage sale. And you can see the filing cabinet off to the left. My boys um, at that age knew way more about the computer than I did. We moved from Mississauga to Calgary. And as you can see, the desk came with us. This is our new PC Junior, which we bought mostly for the boys so that they wouldn't be on my computer all the time. And we had an actual office in our house there. It uh, probably should have been a bedroom for one of our kids, but it was on the main floor and we needed an office, so that's what it was. The problem was we only lived there for 13 months and then we were on our way to Markham, where I got a real desk for my computer and this was in our family room. Um, so yes, the boys were there all the time, and so was I. The desk that we had had from the beginning, we actually found at a garage sale a top for it, and my cookbooks ended up in it. It ended up in the kitchen, and um, because we were homeschooling, uh, that's what it was used for. Some of the homeschooling supplies were kept in it. This was our dining room, and as you can see, there are a whole lot of things in our dining room that wouldn't normally be in a dining room. They were called books and other writing materials, and my desk actually ended up in the dining room um, at one point as well. It was there for quite a while, actually, um, and then it moved back to the family room, and then it moved upstairs to one of the bedrooms. Uh, when our oldest son got married and we actually had a little more space. And in that house, I actually wrote a ton of stuff. I wrote articles. I wrote um, about eight or nine or ten books. Um, I edited a newsletter for World Team for five years. Edited a church newsletter. I did a lot of stuff in that house. Uh, most of my writing was done there. And there we are back to the present. This, as I said before, is my writing office and I love it. I painted it that color because it made me feel good. And I'm trying to surround myself with things that I love in it. So what if you have some space to write but it's in chaos? Like my space has often been in the past. Yes, this is a picture of my space. Take some quality time to just sit and think about what works best for you. I remember when our kids were small, we wanted them to set the table and empty the dishwasher when it was clean, but they weren't tall enough to reach the cupboard where the dishes were kept. So I went into the kitchen and sat down on the floor and looked at the kitchen from the perspective of my sons. After seeing the cupboards and the dishwasher through their eyes, I moved all of our dishes to the bottom cupboard. We were the only family I knew who had pots and pans in an upper cupboard and plates and glasses in a lower one. But for a number of years, that's what worked best for us, so that's what we did. Look at the space you have and each element in it. Study it. Does having a table in that corner take up a lot of space and not hold much? Could you fit a filing cabinet into the same space? Do you really like that plain wall with one picture on it, or would a bulletin board be more effective? Have you simply added files to your computer as you worked on different things, or have you ever taken the time to think about what folders you actually need and what categories they'd fit under? Do you have extra file folders and labels that you can use to make new files? Do you have a lot of items you no longer need? Reorganize your space, your files, and your computer according to what will work for you. I personally like to start from the big picture and work to the smaller one. It helps me to get everything out of the room and start from scratch. 
First move the furniture if it's needed. Then I work my way down to the contents of each drawer or file. As is usual in organizing things, you should have three bins or boxes with you. Garbage, things to keep, and things to give away. If you're still creating a workspace or if your possessions seem to drift around, you may need a fourth box for things that belong in another location of your home. Take a day if you can or take an hour a week for as long as necessary, but keep at it until your workspace, no matter what size it is, is exactly the way you feel will work best for you. Even if you work at the kitchen table, you can have a plan and a portable office that you carry with you. Yes, I have been there and I have done that. And by the way, if you can get two screens on your computer, ah, uh, do it. I find mine invaluable. There is a handout for this workshop and you can get it by going to the link below. Click on the arrow at the bottom left of this video and you'll find a link to the handouts and more information. And if you want to know whenever I post a new video here, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter. You can link to me at writewithexcellence.com, the website link. My personal website is njlinguist.com and Write With Excellence is actually just a page on that website. My mystery website for my mystery books is jamenzies.com. Hot Apple Cider Books that I edit and publish, hotapplesiderbooks.com. My personal Twitter is nj underscore Lindquist. You can like me on Facebook at NJ Lindquist Author, and you can connect on LinkedIn at, again, NJ Lindquist. Thank you for watching, and I hope that something I've said has been of value to you. If you're discussing this with a group, there are some tips on my handout. Thank you.